Mathematical Literacy, Lesson 18. Topic, Measurement Volume. Turn to Lesson 18 in the Learner's Workbook. This lesson includes an individual activity with summative assessment. Integration, this lesson integrates with hospitality studies, mathematics, engineering, geography, physical science, and life in general. Prior knowledge, this lesson builds on what you learned in grade nine mathematics. Lesson overview. In this lesson, you will focus on the measurement of volume. Hi, I'm Anna, and I'm back with another of our lessons based on the grade 10 curriculum for mathematical literacy. Lesson by lesson, we help you to develop the knowledge and skills that you need in order to make a success of the subject. And by doing that, you'll be better prepared to participate in and contribute to the world in which you live, a world that is defined by numbers. In today's lesson, we continue our work on the learning outcome that deals with, among other things, measurement. In this lesson, we will focus on the measurement of volume. Throughout this lesson, we will address the assessment standards of learning outcome three, space, shape, and measurement, which expects that learners should be able to measure using appropriate instruments, to estimate and calculate physical quantities, and to interpret, describe, and represent properties of and relationships between two-dimensional shapes and three-dimensional objects in a variety of orientations and positions. At the start of the last lesson, I made the point that the world we live in is made up of a range of objects with different sizes, shapes, and made from a range of materials. From the clothes we wear, to the houses we live in, to the food that we consume. We're always busy with things, and we need to be able to quantify them. From knowing how far it is from our house to our place of work, or how many square meters of cloth are needed to make the shirt that we're wearing, to knowing the number of cubic meters of cement needed to build our house, knowing how many liters of petrol are needed to drive from A to B, or how many liters of milk we need to feed the family. We're always busy calculating, and in order to do those calculations, we need to be able to measure. There are typically three different measurements that we take, length, area, and volume. In today's lesson, I'd like to focus on volume. But because it relies on area, I'd like to quickly remind you what we said in our previous lesson about area. We said that area refers to the number of square units of a certain size needed to cover the surface of a figure. We made sense of that definition by thinking about a sheet of grid paper like this and said that if we wanted to know the area of, say, this shape, then we would do the following. We would put the shape down and then take our grid paper and place it over the shape. We would then simply count the number of square units that are needed to cover the shape. In the previous lesson, we made the point that one has to make a decision about what to do at the edge where the shape does not completely fill a block. Because it would be impractical to walk around with a piece of grid paper like this all of the time, we need to become more efficient. And to do so, we developed formula for calculating the area of different shapes. We developed the formula for determining the area of a rectangle as follows. We noticed that different rectangles could be made that had exactly the same area. Notice how each of these three rectangles have an area of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 square units. But they also have two other dimensions. Each of these rectangles has a length and a breadth. Notice the first rectangle has a length of 12 units and a breadth of one unit. By contrast, this rectangle has a length of six units and a breadth of two units. And this rectangle has a length of four units and a breadth of three units. 1 times 12 is 12. 
2 times 6 is also 12 and 3 times 4 is 12. We concluded that the area, the number of square units of the rectangle is equal to the length of the rectangle multiplied by the breadth of the rectangle. Having developed a formula for determining the area of a rectangle, I then asked you a strange question. I said, do you think we would be able to use that formula, that is the formula for the area of a rectangle, to develop a formula for the area of a triangle and even a formula for the area of a circle? And if you remember correctly, I showed you that this was indeed possible. To develop the formula for the area of a triangle, I suggested that we simply took a triangle and then took another identical triangle and placed it over it. Let me return to the triangle that I used last time. The next thing we do is to draw a perpendicular line from one of the vertices, one of the corners, to the opposite side. And then we cut this triangle along that line. We move that piece out and we put it over there. We move that piece out and we put it over there. In so doing, we've created a rectangle. A rectangle that has a length and a breadth. And since we know the formula for the area of a rectangle, we know that the area of the rectangle is equal to length times breadth. But the area of this rectangle is two times the area of the triangle because there's the red triangle and the yellow triangle that's been cut up into two pieces. And that's equal to the length times the breadth. Now I introduce two new letters. I said in the case of a triangle we're going to call the length the base and we're going to call this breadth the perpendicular height of the triangle from which it followed that the area of the triangle was equal to the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle all divided by 2. Sometimes we see this formula referred to as one half of the base times the height. In the case of the circle we also started out with a circle but we did things a little bit differently there. There we cut the circle into a large number of wedges. And if you remember carefully, we took those wedges and we rearranged them to create what looked like a rectangle. And knowing that the area of a rectangle is given by length times breadth, we were also able to derive a formula for the area of a circle. And in that way, we developed three different formulae for area. We said that the area of a rectangle is determined by multiplying its length by its breadth. That the area of a triangle is determined by multiplying one half by the base and the height of the triangle. And finally, that the area of a circle is equal to pi multiplied by the radius of the circle squared.